Hey guys, Neely here. I'm coming in for a new type of video that I'm excited to start doing. I am getting to the point where I'm getting lots and lots of comments and questions every single day and it is so fun to hear from everybody and to have people be interested in the things I'm sharing and I thought it would be fun to just kind of do some Q&A videos, just kind of pick through different comments from the past week and answer the questions that you guys have. I know that um, people don't come back to videos and read the comments and read all the questions and the answers, so putting it all in a video like this is going to help uh, more people get those same questions answered because I know a lot of you have the same questions and instead of me typing it out over and over again um, in individual comments, uh, I thought it would be fun to do a Q&A video. It's just going to be kind of casual. I have my computer set up right here in front of me and um, I kind of picked through the uh, a lot of comments from the past few weeks and hopefully if this if I'm able to keep this up uh, weekly then I'll just have comments from the last week so you won't have to wait several weeks to get your questions answered and I will still be replying to comments I'm not stopping that at all I just um, thought it'd be fun to pick out a few of the frequently asked questions or the questions that I thought would be more interesting for a wider audience um, so I am going to go ahead and just jump right in here this first question is is from W Kip and I will mention that if you guys have names uh, YouTube names that don't have your first name in there I would love it if you would just sign your first name at the comments it just helps me to uh, be able to get to know you a little more and refer to you by your name if you feel comfortable of course you don't have to it's just a request um, but W Kip says uh, on your diet plan do you eat all the same meals as your family if not, how do you meal plan for yourself? So I do not necessarily eat all the meals I plan for my family. We do not do a sit down meal every evening. Uh, like a lot of families do, our schedules just don't work like that. And so it's not like I'm sitting at a dinner table with everybody and my plate looks different than everybody else's or there's, you know, everyone's dishing out their food from the dishes and I'm having a separate plate that's all my own. If we do have a sit down meal together, I try really hard to make it a meal that we can all um, eat off of and so that will work for me at least most of the elements of the meal. Um, we Usually it's just Sunday mornings that we have a sit down breakfast. That's kind of our family meal of the week. And when we do that, I will always have at least uh, one or two of the elements be suitable for my diet and then maybe add something or a couple of things um, that are for the family specifically. So um, actually Trish from Just So Trish mentioned, uh, she was talking about this in one of the uh, Mama Gets Fit live videos, which if you don't um, participate in those, you definitely should if you're a woman and um, if you're interested in health. But I will put um, Trish's channel subscription thingy up in the card so you can go check her out and then you can join in those. Those are um, Wednesday mornings. So anyways, um, she was talking about this with uh, on one of those and she had this amazing Venn, Venn diagram that was just perfect and I thought I'd share it. So um, I have the family meals here and then this is my meal and usually there is some kind of an overlap. Like if I make a roasted chicken um, and then to it I add potatoes and green beans. I can eat, if I'm eating a low carb meal, I can eat the chicken and the green beans and then the potatoes will be for the family and I just skip those. So that's usually how it works. Um, there's usually not a meal where we sit down and I'm eating something completely different from everybody else. But since we do have such a casual eating schedule, if I make a meal, like if I make chili mac or something like that, that I'm just not going to participate in, it's no big deal because we're not sitting down and um, participating in the meal together. Everyone kind of eats their own meal in their own time and I cook and eat my own meal in my own time. So that is how it works for me with family meals. Next question is from Susan Marie. She asks, do you drink any type of sweetener in your coffee? And this is a question that I actually just answered on my video yesterday, so hopefully she saw that, but um, I'll quickly answer it again. I do not drink any sweetener in my coffee. I used to, years and years ago, I used Splenda back when I used that sort of thing, um, no longer, but um, then I switched to Stevia and I used that for a long time. But then when I did, 
my first Whole30 where you cut out all sweeteners, I discovered that I didn't even like sweetener in my coffee. So I um, have not had it since. And that was four, wait, uh, that was when I was pregnant with Ruthie. So that was five years ago almost. Yeah, five years ago exactly. Um, so I, yeah, I just have my coffee with collagen and cream and anytime I add sweetener to it anymore, I do not like it. It is not tasty to me at all. My taste buds just totally changed after that um, Whole30 experience. So definitely experiment with that if you've never given up the sweetener and you might discover something about yourself that you didn't know. All right, next question comes from S. Hartman and she says, how do you determine what to buy organic and what to buy conventional? I have my own rules, so I'm curious about yours. Uh, let's see, some things I will only buy organic, other things I'm okay either way depending on the budget and what's available. I am the same way. I, I am aware of the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 list and I try to go by that as much as I can, although I kind of have a rule where if organic is more than twice as expensive as conventional, then I'm not going to go for it. If I can buy two pounds of apples for the same price as one pound of organic apples, I will go for the non-organic. Um, that's just kind of what I have in my head and I don't have any real set rules beyond that. It's just kind of whatever we can afford organic um, is what I go for. All right, next question is from Jen Dyson and she says, were any of your girls ever picky eaters? And the answer is absolutely yes. <laughs> um, Renee, my youngest, is actually the least picky of all of them, I think so far. She will pretty much eat whatever I give her and she kind of has a, um, a taste for savory rather than sweet. So she will rather eat a stew or a casserole um, than eat a waffle or a cupcake. That's totally different than all my other kids. My pickiest is my first, Autumn. She's almost 12 and she was a trouble. <laughs> she, when I would have to introduce a new food to her when I was spoon feeding her, I would have to give her bites of something that she knew. She loved oatmeal. That was her favorite thing. So I'd give her bites of oatmeal and then I'd have to sneak in a bite of something else just to get her to try it. She would just absolutely refuse. So we have um, worked through that. And then the, the middle two kids kind of, um, kind of in between. They've been somewhat picky, but um, a, not as bad as Autumn was. So we've just had to work through it and continue to um, introduce new things and find creative ways to introduce them. And then we just have the rule of if you don't finish your food at your meal, then you just get to eat it for your next meal. And once you finish it, then you can, you know, pick something else that you want to eat. So that has always worked. There have been a few hunger strikes here and there, but uh, they always come around to eating whatever it is that is offered. Next question is from Susan Essential Home E. She says, I noticed the three kids squeezed with the oldest in the middle seat. This is from our uh, grocery haul uh, and our beginning of the month shopping. She says, poor thing. I know she's probably used to it. Was that a van or a car that you are driving in? And we are driving in a Subaru Outback and we are at the point where we can't have any more kids unless we get another car because right now we can't all fit in the, the car. If we go somewhere as a family, my husband has to drive his truck. Um, I can fit in the car with the four kids, uh, but beyond that, we can't fit anybody else. And so it is pretty squeezy and we are in the budget or in the market for another vehicle, but um, we are kind of waiting and just waiting for the right opportunity to come up and uh, the money to be available. So. Yes, she does squeeze in the middle there and um, she's a good sport about it and she's she's a skinny little bean, so it works out fine. Next question from Bren0201. She says, was that a friction pen and what do you think of them? And yes, oh, I should have it. Oh, I have my planner right here. I can pull out my friction pens and these were recommended to me by a couple people watching my planner videos and that was very helpful and I've really enjoyed using these. These are the friction pens. I have a couple different kinds um, and they are erasable. Friction, the friction of this eraser makes the ink disappear. I don't know how it works, but it's pretty amazing. Um, and I, I really like these. I like them for when I'm doing my planning, um, when I'm writing in like a to-do list or things on my calendar 
and um, I have the freedom to erase if I make a mistake. I don't use them for like my layouts, for my weekly layouts or my writing out my calendar or um, like the lines of the calendar and stuff because I don't want to accidentally erase that if I'm erasing something else. So I still use my, um, let's see, these other one, the Pigma Micron and the, um, uh, I, I can't find it right now, but um, the uh, Pitt Artist Pen, Faber-Castell. So anyways, yes, I really like these um, for, for writing in my planner on a daily basis.